this is Susan with NRSNG. Today we will be working through a care plan on atrial fibrillation. To see our massive free database of nursing care plans, just visit nrsng.com backslash nursing care plans. You can also download our free editable PDF care plan template that I'm using at nrsng.com backslash care plan template. So let's get into it. Our first nursing diagnosis is risk for bleeding related to anticoagulation as evidenced by PT, PTT, INR. So when a patient is in atrial fibrillation, they're at high risk for a clot, so we give them an anticoagulant. Uh, in the hospital, generally, we start with heparin, um, and then we would move towards something like Coumadin. Um, we can also move towards Lovenox. Um, and there's different kinds of anticoagulation um, that a patient could be taking as well. Uh, but it's going to be changing their bleeding times and their clotting times. The second nursing diagnosis is anxiety related to chest pain and palpitations as evidenced by subjective data from the patient. So the patient's going to tell you that they feel very anxious. Um, a lot of patients that have these chest pains and like their heart beating out of their chest, it's the same kind of feeling that you get when you're very anxious. So a lot of them will tell you that they are very anxious or feeling anxious. The third nursing diagnosis is decreased cardiac output related to irregular heart rate as evidenced by your EKG reading. So your EKG is going to show that the um, heart rate is irregular and due to the fact that your heart isn't beating um, as efficiently as it can, it's going to decrease the output. For your patient goals, uh, like we had said, risk for bleeding, so we want them to take anticoagulants as prescribed, keep all of their doctor's appointments and all of their blood draws. So patients who are on anticoagulants, they will be monitored frequently to make sure that their levels of um, their clotting times are all in the level that we want it to be at, what is perfect for their particular diagnosis or um, their age. There's a lot of factors involved um, to calculate it out, weight-based and everything. So make sure that they do all of that. Um, we're going to educate them on the importance of proper anticoagulation and clot prevention. Um, not sitting in one place for too terribly long or taking their medication because if they don't anticoagulate, the risks of having a clot that moves from their heart chamber up into their brain or their lungs or their leg. So yes, we're going to implement this and our evaluation will just be with the anticoagulation levels being within normal limits. When we do the blood draws, we'll know that they're within normal limits or not and adjust as needed. So for the second patient goal, avoid falls. This is huge. and Be prepared for any bleeding. Um, I just recently was at Lowe's and um, I asked them if they had any band-aids and the guy said no, but if you need a band-aid, I have one. And I thought that was curious. And so I asked him and he said, I'm on an anticoagulant and so I have to carry band-aids around just in case I get a cut. This is such an excellent plan. I've carried that into my nursing practice when I teach my patients, okay, you're on anticoagulants. We need to get you set up with extra band-aids. You need to carry gauze around with you or whatever um, you need to stop any bleeding. And then, of course, falling. If you hit your head, uh, you end up bleeding, having a hemorrhagic stroke. And also, you can fall onto something and cause internal bleeding as well, like abdominal bleeding. Um, so educate patient on the risks of fall and also prepare them with a kit for band-aids, gauze, etc. Yes, we're going to implement this. And this is, we are going to assess the um, outcome by doing a skin assessment and by them giving us the no falls report. These are 
the two biggest areas in nursing, skin and falls. We own the skin and we own falls. So we want to really hone down on this, um, making sure that their skin is is 100% over again, like you've checked it, you know it's good, and um, that they haven't fallen. Our fall risks, you know, making sure that they wear their shoes when they're inside, there aren't any loose rugs, the area is well lit, clear of clutter, things like that. So for the third Oops, I'm sorry. For the third goal, <laughs> we're going to control the heart rate with antiarrhythmics. Um, these are your beta blockers, your calcium channel blockers, and your cardiac glycosides. So beta blockers are your olols. Um, like labetalol is a beta blocker. Your calcium channel blockers are such as cardizem. Um, your cardiac glycoside is your digoxin or your dig. So what are we going to do for these patients? Uh, we're going to educate them on the importance of taking these medications um, on a regular basis. Yes, of course, we're going to implement this. And finally, um, we're going to monitor the patient's EKG to make sure that their medications are within normal limits and that they're helping. Um, we also want to monitor vital signs. For example, um, Cardizem, which is the calcium channel blocker, it also can drop your blood pressure. So you want to be careful of um, how much cardizem they're getting, especially if they have low blood pressure or if they get dizzy spells. So make sure that your patient knows about anticoagulants, falls, and controlling their heart rate with their antiarrhythmic medications. And that's our care plan on atrial fibrillation. Visit nrsng.com slash nursing care plans for our huge free care plan database and nrsng.com slash care plan template for our editable care plan template PDF. This has been another episode of the NRSNG podcast. Thank you for joining us and thanks for being a part of the NRSNG family. Now, go out and be your best self today.